Welcome to the deep dive. Today, uh, we're going to be taking a deep dive into the world of graphene and a company called Nano Explorer. Okay. Um, you've sent us a bunch of sources on them, financials company, overviews, even details from a recent earnings call, mm. because you're intrigued by graphene's potential, and you want to know if Nano Explorer is a safe bet in this emerging industry. It's a great question. Yeah. Graphene is often dubbed a wonder material. Right. It's stronger than steel, conducts electricity better than copper, and is incredibly flexible, but the real challenge is turning that potential into profit. Yeah. And that's where Nano Explorer's approach gets really interesting. Okay, so let's start with the basics. Yeah. Who is Nano Explorer and what are they all about? So Nano Explorer was founded in 2011 yeah. and is headquartered in Montreal, Canada. Okay. They are listed on both the Toronto Stock Exchange, that's TSX, GRA, and OTCQX, and NXPF. Got it. What sets them apart from many other players in the graphene industry is that they're not just producing raw graphene powder. Okay. They're creating graphene-enhanced products. It's interesting. Plastics, composites, and even batteries for electric vehicles and energy storage. So they're not just selling the raw ingredients, they're creating the finished dish. Exactly. They're involved in every stage of the process, from producing the graphene to incorporating it into products that have real-world applications. Interesting. This is called vertical integration. Okay. And it gives them a lot of control over their supply chain and the quality of their products. That makes sense. It's like they're baking the cake instead of just selling the flour. Right. And it sounds like they're not limiting themselves to just one type of cake either. Yeah. Their product portfolio seems quite diverse. You're absolutely right. Yeah. They have two main segments. Advanced materials, plastics, and composite products, which is their core business right now. Okay. And battery cells, which is focused on the future of energy. So tell me more about these two segments. Sure. What exactly are they doing with graphene in these areas? So in their advanced materials segment, they're using their proprietary graphene black to enhance the properties of various materials. Interesting. For example, adding graphene black to plastics can make them stronger, more conductive, and more resistant to heat and wear. So it's like they're giving these everyday materials a super power boost with graphene. Yeah. That's fascinating. Yeah. And what about the battery cell segment? What makes their batteries special? They are developing silicon graphene enhanced lithium ion batteries. Wow. These batteries have the potential to be more energy dense and longer lasting than traditional lithium ion batteries, which is crucial for the growing electric vehicle and energy storage markets. So they've got a solid foundation with their current products and a keen eye on the future. They do. But with all this talk about graphene being a wonder material yeah. and its vast potential, mm -hmm. how does Nano Explore stand out from the competition? That's a key question. Yeah. As you mentioned, there are other companies out there exploring the possibilities of graphene, but what sets Nano Explorer apart is their focus on both material production and downstream applications. So they're ensuring they have a hand in every part of the graphene value chain. Exactly. From producing the raw material to creating the final product. Precisely. Many other companies are focused solely on producing graphene in its raw form. Right. But Nano Explorer is going a step further by developing and manufacturing products that utilize graphene's unique properties. Mm. This gives them a significant advantage in a rapidly evolving industry. I see. They aren't reliant on others to create demand for their graphene. They're driving that demand themselves. That's a smart move. Mm. It sounds like they are strategically positioning themselves for long-term success by being involved in all aspects of the graphene ecosystem. But a company can have a great strategy and still struggle if their financials aren't in order. That's true. What can you tell us about Nano Explorer's financial health? That's where the details from their recent Q1 2025 report come in. Okay. And I have to say the numbers are quite encouraging. Their revenue jumped by 16% compared to the same period last year, reaching 33.7 million Canadian dollars. Wow. And they're projecting total revenues between 140 million and 155 million for the fiscal year ending June 30th, 2025. That's a healthy increase. What's driving that growth? Is right. it just from selling more graphene or are there other factors at play? It's a combination of things. Um, they're seeing increased demand for their graphene-enhanced powders and compounds, okay. particularly from the plastics and composites industries. Mm -hmm. And remember those programs, they were awarded from two existing customers. 
Yes. You mentioned those earlier. Can you remind me what those programs were about? Sure. So they secured three programs from two existing customers. Okay. A large commercial vehicle, OEM. OEM. Yeah. That stands for Original Equipment Manufacturer. Okay. Essentially, the company that makes the vehicles and an industrial equipment manufacturer. Got it. These programs involve supplying exterior parts for both internal combustion engine and electric vehicles. So they are demonstrating that graphene has applications across the automotive industry, regardless of whether the vehicles run on gas or electricity. Exactly. And these aren't just small one-off deals. Right. These programs generally last for 10 years. Wow. And they estimate those programs will generate $24 million in annual sales at mature volumes. So they're securing substantial recurring revenue streams. They are. Plus, there's a one-time tooling revenue of $10 million. Wow. That's a significant commitment from those customers. Yeah. It sounds like Nano Explorer is really embedding itself into their supply chains. They are, and they're not just relying on existing customers for growth. Right. They're also actively pursuing new opportunities and expanding their manufacturing capacity to meet future demand. Speaking of manufacturing, I remember reading something about them expanding their facilities. Can you tell me more about that? Yes. They have several expansion projects underway. Okay. Their expansion in North Carolina is ongoing, and they expect to start production there by the end of the current fiscal year. Okay. They are also expanding their St. Clotilde de Boost facility in Canada as part of a lightweighting initiative with a major customer. Okay. Interestingly, the customer will be covering a significant portion of the expansion costs for this project. So it's a true partnership. They're working together to achieve shared goals. This focus on partnerships seems to be a recurring theme for Nano Explore. You're right. It's clear they see the value in collaborating with others to bring graphene-enhanced products to market. It sounds like they're firing on all cylinders when it comes to growth. But what about profitability? Are they just chasing revenue, or are they also focused on improving their bottom line? Their expanding gross profit margin is a clear indicator that they are becoming more profitable and they've managed to reduce their long-term debt, which is always a positive sign for potential investors. Right. They are also being strategic about their investments, oh. carefully planning and allocating capital to maximize returns. I remember reading something about them securing a new credit facility. What can you tell me about that? They secured a credit facility with the Royal Bank of Canada, okay. which includes a $10 million revolving credit line and up to $50 million in lease financing for equipment and infrastructure. So they have the financial flexibility to execute their growth plans. It sounds like they're in a strong position financially, but what about research and development? Are they investing in innovation to stay ahead of the curve? Absolutely. They received a grant of almost $3 million over three years from the National Research Council of Canada to develop low-carbon footprint anode materials for batteries. That's significant. Not only does it show their commitment to sustainability, which is increasingly important, but it also highlights their focus on being at the forefront of battery technology. What else are they doing on the research and development front? They are constantly working on improving their existing products and developing new ones, for instance. They are developing a new manufacturing process that boosts key physical properties and polymers by 20% compared to existing products. Wow, 20%. That's a significant improvement. What kinds of applications does this new process have? It has a wide range of applications, from batteries and lightweight composites to plastic pipes, geosynthetics, recycled plastics, concrete drilling fluids, and insulation foams. It sounds like they're not limiting themselves to just a few niche applications. They're thinking big picture and exploring how graphene can make a difference across various industries. They are, and they're taking steps to protect their innovations. Okay. They've already secured several patents, which creates a barrier to entry for potential competitors. That's smart. It gives them a competitive edge and allows them to reap the rewards of their research and development efforts. Mm -hmm. But let's talk about their battery cell segment for a moment. Okay. It seems like that area has the most explosive growth potential. What updates can you share on that front? They recently announced the successful commissioning of their graphene-enhanced silicon and anode active material pilot lines. Oh, wow. This is a crucial step towards commercializing their battery technology. That's exciting. So they're moving beyond just research and development and starting to lay the groundwork for mass production. Are there any challenges they face in this area? Of course, no venture is without its obstacles. The battery market is evolving rapidly and competition is fierce. They have been transparent about the risks involved and are making strategic decisions to prioritize projects with a clearer path to profitability. I see. So they're taking a measured approach and not just chasing every opportunity that comes their way. 
What specific decisions have they made in this regard? For instance, they've decided to scale down their Voltage Floor battery initiative for now. Okay. To focus on more immediate growth opportunities. But it's important to note that they are still committed to advancing their battery technology in the long term. So they're balancing their short-term goals with their long-term vision. It's a smart strategy for navigating a dynamic and competitive industry. It seems like they are really hitting all the right notes. They are financially sound. They are diversifying their product portfolio. They are pursuing strategic partnerships. And they are actively investing in research and development. But before we get ahead of ourselves, we need to consider the potential risks involved. You're right. Every investment carries some level of risk. And Nano Explorer is no exception in the final part of our deep dive. We'll explore some of the challenges they might face and discuss what it all means for you as you weigh your investment decision. All right. So we've spent a good amount of time talking about why Nano Explorer seems like a promising player in the graphene space. Mm. But as with any investment, there are always potential downsides. What are some of the things that could go wrong or at least create bumps in the road for them? That's where critical thinking is essential. We can't get caught up in all the excitement about graphene without considering the realities of the market and the challenges any company in this space faces. So let's talk about those challenges. What are some of the potential risks or roadblocks Nano Explorer might encounter? One of the first things that comes to mind is scalability. They've demonstrated the benefits of graphene in various applications, but can they scale their production to meet what could be massive demand? Right, because it's one thing to produce graphene-enhanced materials in a lab or on a small scale, but quite another to manufacture them on a massive scale to meet the needs of, say, the global automotive industry or the booming energy storage market. Exactly. Scaling up production involves not just building bigger factories, but also ensuring consistent quality managing complex supply chains and controlling costs as they ramp up production. That can be a tricky balancing act for any company, especially one operating in a relatively new and rapidly evolving industry. And even if they manage to scale up successfully, they're not operating in a vacuum. What of the competitive landscape? How crowded is the graphene market and how fierce is the competition? The graphene market is becoming increasingly crowded, that's for sure. New players are emerging all the time, drawn by the potential of this wonder material, and some existing companies seeing the writing on the wall are starting to shift their focus to graphene. So Nano Explorer will need to stay ahead of the innovation curve. What's cutting edge today might be commonplace tomorrow. How can they ensure they maintain a competitive edge? Constant innovation is key. They need to keep investing in research and development, explore new applications for graphene, and find ways to differentiate themselves from the competition. Their vertical integration strategy certainly helps in this regard, as it gives them more control over their products and processes, but they can't afford to become complacent. And let's not forget about factors outside their control. They've mentioned some uncertainty related to their largest customer. How reliant are they on this one customer? And what happens if that relationship changes or demand from that customer softens? It's true that relying too heavily on a single customer can be risky, especially in a volatile market. It's like putting all your eggs in one basket. They'll need to continue to diversify their customer base and reduce their dependence on any one client to mitigate this risk. And speaking of external factors, what about the broader economic climate we're seeing? Inflation, rising interest rates, and geopolitical uncertainty all over the world? How could these macroeconomic trends impact their business? That's an important point. Economic downturns can certainly impact demand for new materials and technologies. Companies might be less willing to invest in innovation when budgets are tight, and rising interest rates could make it more expensive for Nano Explorer to finance their growth plans. So it's a reminder that even the most promising companies are not immune to macroeconomic headwinds. A lot of this is sounding very familiar to the dot-com bubble. Great ideas that were ahead of their time but still failed because of the macro climate of the time. I imagine that's probably on your mind a lot. You are absolutely right to be thinking that way. It's certainly a parallel that investors should be thinking about. Graphene has so much potential. But if the global economy is sputtering, that is going to create challenges for companies in the space, even those that are doing a lot of things right. So given everything we've discussed, the potential, the challenges, the risks, what's the bottom line? Is Nano Explorer truly the safest play in the graphene industry? Well, as we've said before, no investment is entirely risk-free. The graphene industry is still in its early stages, and there will inevitably be bumps along the road. The key is to assess whether the potential rewards outweigh the risks. And that's a decision each individual investor has to make for themselves 
based on their own risk tolerance, investment goals, and overall financial situation. Mm -hmm. No one can tell you definitively whether a particular investment is right for you. Exactly. In Nano Explorer's case, we see a company with strong fundamentals, a clear and well-defined strategy, a solid track record of execution and a commitment to innovation, but they also face challenges inherent in any emerging industry as well as broader economic uncertainties. So they're doing a lot of things right, but are still subject to forces beyond their control. Oh. What advice would you give our listener who's trying to decide whether to invest in Nano Explorer? I would say don't just take our word for it. Do your own research. Dive deeper into their financial reports, read industry analyses, follow their progress closely, and see how they're addressing the challenges we've discussed, become as informed as possible, weigh the potential rewards against the risks, and then make a decision that aligns with your personal investment philosophy. That's great advice, and it brings us back to the core mission of the Deep Dive, which is to empower you, our listeners, to make informed decisions. Mm -hmm. They don't just give you answers. We help you ask the right questions. And sometimes the questions are even more important than the answers. Here's one final question for our listener to ponder. If graphene truly lives up to its hype as the material of the future, what other industries could Nano Explore potentially disrupt in the years to come? What new applications and markets might emerge that we haven't even considered yet? It's something to think about as you continue your research. It certainly is. And that's what makes this field so exciting. It's full of possibilities and potential breakthroughs. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive into Nano Explorer. We hope you found it informative and thought-provoking. Until next time.